This video is to help clarify some of the many sulfides that are out there that people are so confused by. All the time, people find this little rock right here, iron pyrite, in rock, and they're like, I found gold, I found gold! Or, because it can be different colors, and immutably, whenever there are a price of a particular metal is higher, whether it be platinum or palladium, whatever metal is highest, everybody is always finding that metal and claiming that this little rock must be that metal because they found it out four-wheeling or they found it out somewhere. Therefore, it has to be not the most common element out there in the earth. It has to be the most expensive element out there in the earth. It's not. It's just iron pyrite. Now, when people were mining, this was a key to find because oftentimes in iron pyrites you could find associated gold. This is a piece from the Black Hawk Central City area. There are pyrites associated with it and galenas in quartz and you can see there's absolutely different crystals of each in there. The gold being the yellow, the pyrites being the darker colors. A lot of times it was also associated with the galena and lead. This is another piece like that. It's from central Colorado. Uh, very rare to find now, but uh, this is what it looked like when they were pulling it out of the rock when they could see the visible gold. Now as they got deeper in most of the common veins, a lot of it looked like this. You had banding where you had pyrites and galena lines and sphalerite, which is a zinc ore an iron ore, and a lead ore, and they were in these veins. Now this one I polished the edges on to show as an example so people could see what they look like. There's a couple other pieces that I've polished here also. This piece here is a piece of composite ore. You have the lead, which is the darker line. You have the pyrite crystals, which are the yellow crystals that are in there. On the outside on the dump it was found, it wasn't very spectacular looking, but when you cracked it open, it got very interesting. Uh, there's also some tenantite in there, which is incredibly hard to see. It's this very fine-grained sulfide. Uh, that was a big target they would have after. Another common mineral that's found in a lot of these dumps is sphalerite. It was also called amberjack back in the day. It is a zinc crystal. It can be black to yellow to clear to red to orange. To green and uh, this one has some of those colors in it. Um, this is a fairly large crystal and fairly uh, remarkable for its size. Uh, in this particular ore sample some more of that material is right there. Pyrite we just went over. This is a piece of composite ore that is tenantite as well as galena and sphalerite. The darkest gray being sphalerite, the light gray being the tenantite, and the very fine grain stuff is, is the tenantite, and then the uh, medium gray is, is the lead and galena ore. This is what they were going after back in the day. You get to a higher purity galena that's darker. Some of it is argentiferous, like this is. Uh, when you cut it, this came from a composite vein. One of the interesting things that happened in this district, because you'll see different minerals in there, you'll see broken chunks of galena and pyrite, is first the vein filled up with galena, lead and silver, and then it cracked open and blasted with other minerals, which is why they broke up and made these composite veins. So you'll have pyrites that are broken inside the galena, and they're both loaded with gold and silver. Uh, these minerals made people a lot of money when they found this stuff right here. The next thing we're going to move on to is the other most commonly misidentified item out there. Everybody hears about Cripple Creek, and the tellurium, sylvanite, tellurides, you name it. This is the real deal. Most people see this, they're like, I found telluride. It's like, no, 
You didn't. You found pyrite. Tellurides oftentimes are in this purple colored material, which is a fluorite. The tellurides in this sample are these little tiny flecks mixed in with the chalky fluorite. When more spectacular specimens were found, they looked like this. I hope the video does a good job of showing it. Notice how they're longer, they're angular. They look nothing like pyrite. They're silver, but they look nothing like pyrite. And then I have this spectacular specimen back here, which you have it mixed with chalcopyrite, and then you have the tellurium sylvanite mix on there. Now, a lot of haters out there and people who don't know what they're talking about are going to go, well, how can you prove it? It's like, all right, well, we'll use science. The next ray spectrometer. So I'll take it to one of these specimens like this. And we'll pull the trigger. Hmm, look at that. Five kilos of silver to the ton. Let's see how much gold is in there. Oh, wow. Two percent gold. That's like 4,000. No, that's 400 ounces of gold per ton. Let's try another specimen here. Let's try this guy here. Put it on there. We'll pull the trigger. Little iron. Oh, look at that. True tellurium. Seven kilos of gold per ton. That is... 210, 220 ounces of gold per ton, or 7,000 grams per ton, on this little rock right here. And people wonder why Colorado miners became senators and multimillionaires at $20 gold from Cripple Creek. Well, here's your answer. They found rooms full of this stuff. So that's a common one out there. Now, the nice thing about some of these tenantite pieces, how do we know it's tenantite? Everybody's like, well, it looks like pyrite. Okay, well, let's find out. So we'll put it here, and we'll x-ray it, and we'll see what we get. And there we go. Notice it's got a kilo of silver per ton, a little less than an ounce of gold per ton, but there's antimony in there. That SB, that's a sign of a tenantite, and there's also a decent amount of copper in there as well. So there's some small tenon tights in that particular piece. So we know it's good. We've got another piece here that should x-ray interestingly. Also the leads and, tel uh, and whatnot. We x-ray it. And, oh, look at that. There's a tenon tight for you. It's got a kilo and a half of silver. Almost uh, six, six kilos of uh, um, antimony. Right there are the SB, and 75 grams of gold per ton, so two and a half ounces of gold per ton, and some lead too. These composite minerals like this, where they were all mixed together, are serious money. And I mean disgusting money when you're running numbers like that. The tenantites are these little grays, the galenas are the darker gray, and then the pyrites are more of the yellow colors. And this is in the quartz matrix. Here's some more of it. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And this is the money rock. This is where all the money's at. And some people ask about silver. That's what silver looks like in the rock matrix. This is with some rhodochrosite. This one I ended up buying because it was a nice piece. I love to collect silver. But hopefully this is helpful so that people can find this familiar color in these familiar ores. 
and a lot of them don't really look very spectacular at first glance. And then when you x-ray them, they're incredible. And we're talking percentages of gold or kilos per ton. That is just insanity. Especially this one here. Oh, that shot's only showing 6,000 grams per ton. So six kilos of uh, gold per ton. And when you look at it, it doesn't look like anything special at all. It looks like pyrite. And that's why there's so much confusion out there. So I hope that this video helps clarify it. Uh, because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they immediately find some shiny rock and assume it's the most expensive metal or... You know, usually it's platinum because they saw some rap video in the 90s and some guy screamed the words platinum, bitch, and everybody's like, oh, wow, platinum. It's like, okay, well, yeah, there's platinum out there, but it's not all that exciting. And it's not even worth that much money anymore. Gold, on the other hand, is, and that's a very common element if you know what you're looking for. Uh, a lot of this material was cast in the dumps and thrown away thinking that it was worthless until people figured out otherwise. Um... <clears throat> just because it doesn't look like this on first glance doesn't mean that it's not there. But most people, they see that, and then they see this in the field, and they're like, it must be the same. It's like, well, no, it's, it's actually not at all. When you put them side by side, and when you know what you're looking at and what you're looking for. Uh, very different crystal structure, very different elemental test. When I take this piece of common pyrite and pull the x-ray on the trigger on it, Let's see what we get. Hmm. Rather unceremonious and interesting. 15% iron, no brainer there. A little bit of lead, some molybdenum, a little rubidium, a little uranium, a little thorium. And we're not getting any precious metals on that shot because not all pyrites are the same and valuable. Some are incredibly dense with gold, some are not. So I hope this video helps clear up some of the misunderstandings out there. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a good shot of what these little telluride crystals look like under high magnification. See that right there? See those little lines on it and how they're elongated? That's a tell, because they have all these elongated crystals. There's an extremely good example right there. They're little blades on that one. On the other crystal, they're microscopic, but they're not cubical like pyrite is. They're just little tiny specks. that really aren't that interesting to look at, except for the fact that they're about a third gold. And then if we look at this other piece that was silver and gold mixed, it's definitely different. But you don't see sulfides that look like that. Right there is your first clue. It's got a crystalline structure to it that's not cubical, like in a pyrite. We move over to the pyrite. And it's a lot different. More cubical. More hackly. And if we go over to the galenas and tenantites, completely different world. When we look at the tenantites on this rock, Very fine-grained material. And a good mix of uh, material. So anyway, hopefully this is helpful for people for educational reasons and clarification reasons. Please share and like. Uh, this is David Emsley with Prospector's Golden Gems. Uh, if you happen to need any services, 
There's our contact information, uh, www.prospectorsgoldengems.com. We do all forms of gold, silver, and uh, uh, platinum and palladium refining and offer a multitude of other services, including x-ray spectrometer and mining uh, consultation as well. Anyway, thank you very much.